Well, good evening and welcome to the sixth in our series of how to heal when you have to deal. Tonight, um, we're not doing any of the fun little things that we've tried to do over the last few weeks. Um, we did, you know, a, a few different things to liven it up. Tonight, though, I want to get, have, have some serious conversation around relationships, uh, windows of tolerance, and how stress and trauma can affect all types of relationships, really. So I, I hope that this will be valuable for some of you. Um, I'm going to discuss some pitfalls, and I'm also going to try and talk a little bit about some of the things that we can do to try and avoid some of those pitfalls or to dig ourselves out uh, once we've fallen in. So um, I want to start by giving just a little bit of background. Um, many of you may know, uh, but not everybody knows, that my wife Peggy and I, um, who we both own, you know, we're the co-owners of Rays of Hope, um, and both of us spend our volunteer time um, working in disaster stress management. We work with a, an organization called Green Cross Academy of Traumatology. It's an all-volunteer organization that gets called in uh, following uh, disasters, uh, most often natural disasters, but sometimes man-made as well. So, for example, um, we've been involved in different roles um, after the 2014 Oso landslide in Washington State, um, after the Butte County fires in Paradise, California, um, Rockport, Texas, uh, Hurricane Harvey back in 2017, as, as well as some others. So what the reason that I'm giving you that background is because both of us, in addition to our regular jobs, in addition to teaching stress management, in addition to teaching about trauma-informed business practices and ways of living, we have some very practical experience with working in areas of high stress. Um, Peggy is actually not here today, so I'm doing this um, with my own phone and I uh, hope that I've got it all centered correctly. It looks right on the screen. Um, and the reason that she's not here right now is because she has a job as director of um, a community resource center in which she helps people who are struggling, whether they're homeless, whether they are uh, you know, having difficulties with housing, with income, have other needs. She works with that all day and she's actually there right now as I'm shooting this video. So I, I lead with all of that, again, because I want you to know that we have a background and we actually teach people how to manage stress, how to bridge relationships and keep going. And despite all that, we are human, we are subject to stress, and the last month or so now that we've had the intense response with the COVID-19 emergency has been very trying for us. And we have a very solid relationship. Uh, we were married on July 28th, 2012. Uh, Anniversary is coming up in a few months, folks. Um, but, you know, we, we communicate well. We both have a lot of practice, both with ourselves and with teaching other people and guiding them on how to keep calm, how to work with things, even when it's very stressful. And despite all that, we have been feeling some of that intense pressure as well. I'm not going to go into great details or anything like that, but we have definitely recognized over the last few weeks that we're having some major stress responses right now. Um, as, as we're dealing with trying to figure out income issues, trying to figure out, um, you know, being an essential worker and 
you know, putting ourselves out there, uh, putting ourselves at risk, um, you know, working with people, trying to help them, trying to help keep them fed, um, even as so many things are shutting down and th there's dangers around um, having contact and so trying to get PPE, uh, personal protective equipment, trying to do all of that, trying to obey the orders and everything like that has put intense pressure on us. And there have been a few times over the last week where we've had some major misunderstandings. Um, it's been probably two or three times and we have realized that we are snapping at each other, that we have taken something in a wrong way. And fortunately, because of that training, because of that practice, because we make that a solid part of our lives, we have been able to talk through and resolve those differences, resolve those misunderstandings, and solidify our foundation of our relationship even better. Um, that's not to say that we're not going to have more misunderstandings, because I think it's quite possible that we will. As we get stressed, we tend to have our window of tolerance close. Uh, if you saw the graph that I posted earlier, that's what I'm referring to. In a typical situation, day-to-day uh, -day living without, you know, a national emergency or regional emergency or, you know, crisis going on, we generally have a fairly solid window of tolerance as people. Trying to get my hands, there we go. So let's say this is our window of tolerance. And with that window of tolerance then, this is, hey, normal stuff is going on and it, I can deal with it. I can, I, get, I can take the stress, I can take the pressure, I'm accustomed to what's happening right now and so I can deal with it. Now, when we get into times of crisis, when we have stress, when we have additional pressures, what can happen is that that window of tolerance can actually narrow and we start getting irritable or we start checking out um, at times that maybe we wouldn't normally. So, for example, we'll go back to our, our, here's our standard window of tolerance, and we have what's called hyperarousal. Hyperarousal, most people are probably pretty familiar with. That's when this part of the window is coming down, and now we get really upset, even when we're not typically getting upset. We get really stressed out, even when we typically wouldn't get to have we feel overwhelmed. We're constantly looking for something else to go wrong. We're constantly on edge and we can take a word, a sentence completely the wrong way and assume really bad things from what somebody was saying, even though they didn't necessarily mean it that way. Back to our window of tolerance here. If we go the other direction, then here is what's called hypoarousal. And hypoarousal, what happens is that we start checking out. And so as, as our window of tolerance narrows, we start just kind of zoning. Maybe we're sleeping a whole lot. Maybe we have a long day at work and so we just spend it on the couch, you know, watching TV, even though we know that we've got things to do, even though we know that we should be taking care of whatever we need to take care of, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, whether it's in the relationship, we just check out. We just say, I'm done. I can't deal with it. I feel frozen. I feel as if I just can't function right now. So when we have our regular window of tolerance, we operate pretty well usually. And, you know, some people have large windows of tolerance and they're pretty chill and easy going. Some people have narrower windows of tolerance. But in general, this is where we function. And in times of stress and crisis, when either one of these 
starts to close, it really narrows our gap and makes it harder for us to deal with what's going on in the world. As I said earlier, Peggy and I have had some, some misunderstandings over the last few weeks. Um, our windows of tolerance have narrowed down at different times. And, and the good news is it's not, you know, not, oh, it narrowed down. Well, now I'm stuck with it. We can do things. We can, we can increase that window of tolerance again. We can get enough sleep. We can not over-caffeinate. We can not, you know, drink to excess. Um, you know, whatever some of those things are that maybe you're tempted to do when you're feeling very stressed out we can make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. We're still going to make mistakes. We're still going to have misunderstandings. And that's okay because as humans, we do that. The important thing is that after we make a mistake, we take some sort of action. After there's been a misunderstanding, we go back and we try to repair that rupture that just happened we go back, we apologize for our role in it. Whether or not we feel like we're wrong and they're right or they're wrong and I'm right, that part doesn't, doesn't matter as much as repairing that rupture that's happened in the relationship. And this could be a relationship between spouses. This could be a relationship between people who are dating. This could be a relationship with family, with friends, with coworkers. Whoever it may be, all of these relationships are important in our lives. This is our support. This is our networking. This is how we are connecting with the world and how we are relating with the world. So we need to go back. We need to apologize for our part. Whether or not we feel like we are completely in the wrong, we still need to go back and apologize for our part in the misunderstanding. We need to try and then explain where we were coming from and what our understanding is now. So, for example, if I say something to Peggy and she takes it the wrong way and we have a little bit of a, you know, brouhaha, you know, and I don't mean, you know, brouhaha like really bad, but, you know, that misunderstanding, those hurt feelings that, that oh, I can't believe that you're you know, you're stressing me out like this when we're, you know, both in this together. I need to go back and I need to say, it was not my intention for you to take it this way. It was not my intention to add to your stress. It was not my intention to hurt your feelings. It, whatever, whatever happened there. Here's what I was trying to do. And I love you and I care about you. And I want to reconnect with you and heal this rupture, repair this rupture that's happened in our communication. When we do that, it is so powerful. It is so important. This is not about right and wrong. This is about keeping our connection solid, keeping our relationships going and not widening a divide between us and the people that we care about. When we do this, when we come back to someone, whether it be friend, family, coworker, spouse, significant other, what we're doing is that we are modeling that we are open to being vulnerable to them. We are identifying our emotions. We are communicating about that rupture that happened we're apologizing for our role in that communication breakdown and letting that other person know that they are valuable. They are precious. They are loved by you. And hopefully then, that's also coming back the other direction. Um, but even if it's not, we still need to do our part to repair that rupture. One of the ways that we can do this is something that I used to teach our kids when they were younger. And I call it assuming good intentions. Um, too often, when someone says something potentially hurtful or that can be taken in a wrong way, we jump straight to taking it that wrong way. 
we imagine that that other person meant the worst possible thing that could possibly be meant by whatever they said, whatever action they took. However, if we intentionally choose to assume that people mean well in their actions, then we can communicate better. We can let them know that this hurt we can get clarification, we can seek understanding, we can repair that rupture that has happened in the communication and in the relationship. Ways to do this, again, coming back, apologizing for our role, explaining that you didn't mean, we didn't mean for something to be taken in the way that it was taken and that what we were trying to do was explain or we were trying to help and that we're sorry that it went wrong, that we're sorry that there was this communication breakdown. By assuming good intentions, it is so much easier to forgive someone else who has hurt us, who has angered us or irritated us. When we assume that someone was trying to hurt us, our natural reaction is very much so to either throw up a wall and get defensive and not let them in, or maybe even to lash back out and try to hurt them because they hurt us. That does not promote communication. That does not promote a relationship that is solid, a relationship that is working together and trying to do good things for both people in that relationship. If instead, we assume those good intentions, assume that they did not mean to hurt us, assume that they did not mean to add to our burden, and that it was unintentional, then it's so much easier to forgive. So I want to encourage folks to keep that window of tolerance as wide as we can. And I know that that's difficult, but by taking some of the actions that we've talked about on previous series, um, or episodes in this series, sorry, um, we, can, we can work to keep that open. And so even when our window of tolerance is closing, we can take intentional actions to open it. When we're feeling that hyper arousal and we're getting angry and our brows come down and, and we're assuming that people are doing wrong things, by remembering to assume good intentions, we can raise that window back up. We can bring that back to a point where we're not getting irritated, where we're not assuming that someone's trying to hurt us. When that hypo arousal, when that trying to check out and getting tired and feeling frozen and feeling overwhelmed this way starts to come up, we can, by acknowledging our peace, we can push that window back open. We can say, no, I need to take the action. And even though I'm really tired right now, I am still focused. I am still going to work on this relationship. I'm going to work on this communication. And I'm going to make sure that I am, I am letting this person know that they are valuable, precious, and loved. Um, on Thursdays, we, the last couple of Thursday episodes that we've done, we've been working on some progressive muscle relaxation. So tonight, <clears throat> as a reminder around that progressive muscle relax relaxation, the first episode, we started with head and shoulders. Last week, we talked about our torso. And tonight, I'd like to leave you with progressive muscle relaxation for our arms and legs. So hopefully I can get this centered correctly in the, in the video. So for our biceps and upper arms, and remember with progressive muscle relaxation, what we're trying to do is we're trying to increase the tension and then relax. And as we go through all the different muscle groups, that then ends up bringing our bodies into a state where we're more relaxed and where that window of tolerance then is going to be wider. So with our biceps and upper arms, what we want to do is we want to clench our hands into fists. We want to bring our arms up and we want to flex our biceps. Bring it up tight, bring our fists all the way here. And then after a count of three, we open our hands 
and straighten our arms back up. We do this three times. So I'm going to bring it back, count to three, and then relax and bring my arms straight again. Three times. For our wrists and forearms, we're going to bend our hands back as far as we can, count to three, and then bend our hands down. After three, bring them back up. One, two, three, and then back down. One, two, three, and we do that again three times. For our thighs, what we want to do is we want to just, I, I'm not really going to show you this, sorry, but with our thighs, what we want to do is we want to clench them really hard, tighten them up, and then relax them. So tighten them up, count to three, and then relax them. For our lower legs, okay, here we go. See if I can get this in. What we want to do is we want to try to point our toes as far back toward our face as we can. It helps if you have something to put this on, um, or you can just do it on the ground. Uh, and you know, please make that call based on your balance and, and what you have available. But bend those toes as far back as you can. If you want to, you can even reach down and pull them a little tighter. And what you'll feel is along the bottom of your leg, you'll feel these muscles tighten up all the way up and starting to go into your thighs. And at the count of three then, we let them go. And we bring, we bring our, our feet back down straight and relax. And then after a count of three, again, we bring them up. One, two, three. And then we let them down. One, two, three. So that's it for progressive muscle relaxation. Um, if you miss some of the earlier ones, you can certainly come and uh, check out some of the previous videos. Um, again, we're working our way from our head all the way down to our toes. And by the end of doing that, if you go through all of the progressive muscle relaxation um, exercises, then by the end of that, hopefully your body is in a place of much more relaxation. And at that point, your window of tolerance should have increased just a little bit. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate how many people have commented, how many people have um, said that they're getting something out of these videos. We plan to keep on doing them uh, for the duration of the COVID-19 uh, emergency and possibly on. If you'd like to contact us, you can do it via Facebook here. You can also check out our website, raysofhopellc.org. And by all means, if you do find our videos to be valuable, please feel free to share them. Thank you so much. Have a great night.